Chapter 7, Dangerous Encounters, from the first canto, 8th chapter, 24th text of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Vishan Mahagane Purushada Darshanad Asat Sabhaya Vana Vasa Kritshritha Mrde Mrde Neka Maharatastrato Dronyasritash Chasmahare Birakshita Translation My dear Krishna, your Lordship has protected us from a poisoned cake, from a great fire from cannibals, from the vicious assembly, from sufferings during our exile in the forest, and from the battle where great generals fought. And now you have saved us from the weapon of Ashvatama. Purport by Srila Prabhupada the list of dangerous encounters is submitted herein. Devaki was once put into difficulty by her envious brother, otherwise she was well. But Kunti Devi and her sons were put into one difficulty after another for years and years together. They were put into trouble by Duryodhana and his party, due to the kingdom, and each and every time the sons of Kunti were saved by the Lord. Once Bhima was administered poison in a cake. Once they were put into the house made of shellac and set afire. And once Draupadi was dragged out, and attempts were made to insult her by stripping her naked in the vicious assembly of the Kurus. The Lord saved Draupadi by supplying an immeasurable length of cloth, and Duryodhana's party failed to see her naked. Similarly, when they were exiled in the forest, Bhima had to fight with the man-eater demon, Hidimba Rakshasa. But the Lord saved him. So it was not finished there. After all these tribulations, there was the great battle of Kurukshetra, and Arjun had to meet such great generals as Drona, Bhishma and Karna, all powerful fighters. And at last, even when everything was done away with, there was the Brahmastra released by the son of Dronacharya to kill the child within the womb of Uttara, and so the Lord saved the only surviving descendant of the Kurus, Maharaj Parikshit. Here Kunti remembers all the dangers through which he passed before the Pandavas regained their kingdom. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Kunteya pratijani hi name bhaktaha pranashyati which means, My dear Arjun, you may declare to the world that my devotee is never vanquished. The Pandavas, the sons of Pandu, Pandu, were great devotees of Lord Krishna. But because people in the material world are interested in material things, the Pandavas were put into many dangers. Their materialistic uncle Dhritarashtra was always planning to kill them and usurp the kingdom for his own sons. That was his policy from the very beginning. Once Dhritarashtra constructed a house of lac, which was so inflammable that when touched with a match, it would immediately burst into fire. Then he told his nephews and his sister-in-law Kunti, I've constructed a very nice house, and you should go live there for some time. But Dhritarashtra's brother Vidura informed them of Dhritarashtra's policy. 
He wants you to go to that house so that you may burn to ashes. When Dhritarashtra's son Duryodhana understood that Vidura had thus informed the Pandavas, he was very angry. Such is the nature of politics. Then, although the Pandavas knew, our uncle's plan is to send us into that house and set it afire, they agreed to go there. After all, Dhritarashtra was their guardian, and they did not want to be disobedient to the order of a superior. But they dug a tunnel under that house, and when the house was set on fire, they escaped. Another time, when the Pandavas were at home, Dhritarashtra gave them poison cakes, but they escaped from being poisoned. Then Purushara Darshanat. They met a man-eating demon named Hidimba Rakshasa, but Bhima fought with him and killed him. On another occasion, the Pandavas were cheated in a game of chess in the royal assembly of the Kurus. Dhritarashtra, Bhijmadev, Dronacharya, and other elderly persons were present, and somehow or other Draupadi, the wife of the Pandavas, was placed as a bet. Now if you lose, the Kurus told the Pandavas, Draupadi will no longer be your wife. So when the Pandavas lost the game, Karna and Dushasan immediately captured her. Now you no longer belong to your husbands, they told her. You are our property. We can deal with you as we like. Previously, Karna had been insulted during Draupadi's Svayamvara. In those days, a very qualified princess would select her own husband in a ceremony called a Svayamvara. In modern America, of course, any girl may select a husband as she likes, although for a common girl, this is actually not very good. But even in those times, an uncommon, highly qualified girl who knew how to select a good husband was given the chance to do so. Even this, however, was limited by very strict conditions. Dropity's father, for example, placed a fish on the ceiling, and he stipulated that in order to qualify to marry his daughter, a prince had to shoot an arrow and pierce the eye of the fish without directly seeing the fish, but seeing only its reflection in a pot of water on the floor. When these conditions were declared, many princes came to compete for responding to a challenge as a principle for a kshatriya, a heroic leader. In the assembly for Draupadi's Svayamvara, Karna was present. Draupadi's real purpose was to accept Arjun as her husband, but Karna was there, and she knew that if he competed, Arjun would not be able to succeed. At that time it was not known that Karna was a Kshatriya. He was born the son of Kunti before her marriage, but that was a secret. Karna had been maintained by a carpenter, and therefore he was known as a Shudra, a member of the lowest occupational division of society. Draupadi took advantage of this by saying, In this assembly, only Kshatriyas may compete. I do not want any carpenter to come here and take part in the competition. In this way, Karna was excluded. Karna regarded this as a great insult, and therefore when Draupadi was lost in the game, he was the first to come forward. He was Duryodhana's great friend, and he said, now we want to see the naked beauty of Draupadi. Present at that meeting were elderly persons like Dhritarashtra, Bhishma, and Dronacharya, but they did not protest. They did not say, What is this? You are going to strip a lady naked in this assembly? Because they did not protest, they are described as Asat Sabhaya, an assembly of uncultured men. Only an uncultured man wants to see a woman naked, although nowadays that has become fashionable. According to the Vedic culture, a woman is not supposed to be naked before anyone except her husband. Therefore, because these men wanted to see Draupadi naked in that great assembly, they were all rascals. The word sat means gentle, and asat 
means rude. Therefore, Kunti Devi prays to Lord Krishna. You saved Draupadi in that assembly of rude men. When the Kurus were taking away Draupadi's sari to see her naked, Krishna supplied more and more cloth for the sari, and therefore they could not come to the end of it. Finally, with heaps of cloth stacked in the room, they became tired and realized she would never be naked. They could understand it is impossible. At first, Draupadi had tried to hold on to her sari. But what could she do? After all, she was a woman, and the Kurus were trying to strip her naked. So she cried and prayed to Krishna, Save my honor! But she also tried to save herself by holding on to her sari. Then she thought, It is impossible to save my honor in this way. And she let go and simply raised her arms and prayed, Krishna, if you like, you can save me. Thus the Lord responded to her prayers. Therefore it is not very good to try to save oneself. Rather one should simply depend on Krishna. Krishna, if you save me, that is all right. Otherwise, kill me. You may do as you like. As Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Manasa deha geha yo kichu mora arpilun tuya pade nanda kishora which means, quote, My dear Lord, whatever I have in my possession, I surrender unto you. And what do I have? I have this body and mind. I have a little home and my wife and children. But whatever I have, I surrender everything unto you. Unquote. This is full surrender. A devotee of Krishna surrenders unto Krishna without reservation, and therefore he is called a kinchana. The word kinchana refers to something one reserves for oneself, and a kinchana means that one does not keep anything for oneself. Of course, although actually one should surrender in this way, in the material world one should not artificially imitate those who are fully surrendered. According to the example set by Rupa Goswami, whatever possessions one has, one should give 50% for Krishna and 25% for one's relatives who will also expect something, and one should keep 25% for personal emergencies. Before his retirement, Rupa Goswami divided his money in this way. Although later, when his brother Sanatan Goswami, another great devotee, was arrested, Rupa Goswami spent everything. This is full surrender. Similarly, Draupadi fully surrendered to Krishna without trying to save herself, and then unlimited yards of cloth were supplied, and the Kurus could not see her naked. But then in the next game of chess, the bet was that if the Pandavas lost the game, they would go to the forest for twelve years. Thereafter, they were to remain incognito for one year, and if detected, they would have to live in the forest again for another twelve years. This game also the Pandavas lost, so for twelve years they lived in the forest, and for one year incognito. It was while they were living incognito that Arjun won Draupadi. These incidents are all recorded in the book known as the Mahabharat. The word Maha means great or greater, and Bharat refers to India. Thus the Mahabharat is the history of greater India. Sometimes people regard these accounts as stories or mythology, but that is nonsense. The Mahabharat and the Puranas are histories, although they are not chronological. If the history of such a vast period of time was recorded chronologically, how many pages would it have to be? Therefore, only the most important incidents are selected and described in the Mahabharat.
Kunti prays to Krishna by describing how he saved the Pandavas on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Mride Mride Neka Maharatha Stratha. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, there were great, great fighters called Maharathas. Just as military men in modern days are given titles like lieutenant, captain, commander, and commander-in-chief, formerly there were titles like Ekarata, Atirata, and Maharata. The word Rata means chariot. So if a warrior could fight against one chariot, he was called Ekarata. And if he could fight against thousands of chariots, he was called Maharata. All the commanders on the battlefield of Kurukshetra were Maharatas. Many of them are mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Bhishma, Karna and Dronacharya were especially great commanders. They were such powerful fighters that although Arjun was also a Maharata, before them he was nothing. But by the grace of Krishna, he was able to kill Karna, Bhishma, Dronacharya and the others and come out victorious. While speaking with Shukdev Goswami, Maharaj Parikshit also referred to this. He said, The battlefield of Kurukshetra was just like an ocean, and the warriors were like many ferocious aquatic animals. But by the grace of Krishna, my grandfather Arjun crossed over this ocean very easily. This is very significant. We may have many enemies who may be very powerful fighters, but if we remain under the protection of Krishna, no one can do us any harm. Rake Krishna Mare Ke Mare Krishna Rake Ke, which means, quote, He whom Krishna protects, no one can kill. But if Krishna wants to kill someone, no one can give him protection. Unquote. For example, suppose a very rich man is suffering from disease. He may have a first-class physician, medicine, and hospital available for him, but still he may die. This means that Krishna desired, this man must die. Therefore the so-called protective methods we have devised will be useless if Krishna does not desire us to live. The demon Ravan was very powerful. But when Krishna in the form of Lord Ramachandra desired to kill him, no one could protect him. Ravan was a great devotee of Lord Shiva and was praying to Lord Shiva, Please come save me from this danger. But Lord Shiva did not come. Then Parvati, Lord Shiva's wife, asked Lord Shiva, What is this? He is such a great devotee and has served you so much and now he is in danger and is asking your help. Why are you not going to help him? Then Lord Shiva replied, My dear Parvati, what shall I do? I cannot give him protection. It is not possible. Why shall I go? Therefore, if God wants to kill someone, no one can give him protection. And if God wants to protect someone, no one can kill him. Rake Krishna Mare Ke, Mare Krishna Rake Ke. Thus Kunti is remembering how Krishna saved her and her sons one time after another. This is Smaranam, thinking of Krishna. Krishna, you are so kind to us that you saved us from many great dangers. Without you, there was no hope. Then the last danger was Dronyastra, the weapon of Ashvatama, the son of Drona. Ashvatama performed a most abominable act by killing the five sons of the Pandavas. Of course, in the battle of Kurukshetra, both sides belonged to the same family, and practically everyone was killed. But the five sons of the Pandavas survived. So Ashvatama thought, If I kill these five sons of the Pandavas and present their heads to Duryodhana, he will be very much pleased. Therefore, when the five sons were sleeping, he severed their heads which he then presented to Duryodhana. 
At that time, Duryodhana was incapacitated. His spine was broken and he could not move. Ashvatthama said, I have brought the five heads of the Pandavas, my dear Duryodhana. At first, Duryodhana was very glad, but he knew how to test the heads to see whether they were in fact the heads of the Pandavas. When he pressed the heads, the heads collapsed, and Duryodhana said, Oh, these are not the heads of the Pandavas. They must be the heads of their sons. When Ashvatthama admitted that this was so, Duryodhana fainted, and when he revived, he said, You have killed all our hopes. I had hoped that in our family at least these five sons would survive, and now you have killed them. Thus, in lamentation, he died. Subsequently, Arjun arrested Ashvatthama and was going to kill him. In fact, Krishna ordered, Kill him. He's not a Brahmin. He is less than a Shudra. But then Draupadi said, I am suffering because of the death of my sons. And this rascal is the son of our Guru Maharaj, Dronacharya, who has done so much for us. If Ashvatthama dies, then Dronacharya's wife, our mother guru, will be very much unhappy. So release him and let him go away. Thus Arjun freed Ashvatthama. But then Ashvatthama, having been insulted, retaliated by unleashing a Brahmastra. The Brahmastra is something like a nuclear weapon. It can go to the enemy, wherever he is, and kill him. Ashvatthama knew the last descendant of the Kuru family is Parikshit, the son of Abhimanyu. He's in the womb of Uttara, so let me kill him also, and then the entire dynasty will be finished. When that weapon was unleashed, Parikshit Maharaj's mother, Uttara, felt that she was going to have a miscarriage, and therefore she approached Krishna saying, Please save me. Krishna, by his mystic power, therefore entered the womb of Uttara and saved the child. After the battle of Kurukshetra, Parikshit Maharaj, who was still in the womb of his mother, was the last remaining descendant of the Pandavas. And in mature time, when he was born, only his grandfathers were still alive. Parikshit Maharaj was the son of Abhimanyu, who was the son of Arjun and Subhadra, Krishna's sister. When Abhimanyu was sixteen years old, he went to fight, and seven great commanders joined forces to kill him. Subhadra had only one grandchild, Parikshit Maharaj. As soon as he grew up, the entire estate of the Pandavas was entrusted to him, and all the Pandavas left home and went to the Himalayas. This history is described in the Mahabharata. Many great misfortunes befell the Pandavas, but in all circumstances they simply depended on Krishna, who always saved them. Queen Kunti's response to these misfortunes is recorded in the next verse. <laughs> 